Hey you guys, what is up? MG is back again with another video. I don't know what I just said, that was a terrible intro. Back at it again with another video is what I was trying to say. I said it really weirdly, but anyways, today I'm gonna be looking at something really interesting that I've been into lately, and it's been changes in the market for Magic the Gathering cards. I've been kind of buying cards that I think will go up, and then most of my predictions are actually correct, and yeah, so. I just wanted to hop in to one card that I think has been had a really interesting change in the past literally week. It's been crazy. So before we hop into that, I got a couple things here. So I have a pack of War of the Spark. We're gonna open that at the end of this video, so make sure you stay tuned. And my merch is here. If you are interested, pre-orders are now over. They are kind of small. Um, I don't know, I don't really have a size comparison here. Everyone knows what size of Magic the Gathering uh, pack is. There you go. It's that big. Two inches across, 1.2 inches, 1.26 inches up and down. I only have 30 of these beautiful things. I'll let you read them. So make sure you pick them up while I have them. I'm going to leave a link to them in the description below. Make sure you go check them out. Um, also, if you want to help support the channel, other than buying merch, you can do it directly through Patreon.com. But this right here is the best way to do it if you want something back yourself. Um, Patreon will also be linked in the description below. But make sure you go check these things out because these are what gonna be what's going to be helping the channel keep running as of right now. We're going to have a lot more. I'm looking to put this quote on playmats, shirts, whatever you guys are interested in, I will be doing. That being said, let's hop right into this video. So the magic card, <laughs> no pun intended. I meant magic as in like illusion magic, um, but metaphorically, but it's also a magic card. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna stop, I'm not funny, I know. Um, the magic card that has changed the most and the in, most interesting one that I've seen, because it doesn't seem that good, but then I thought about it and I was like, wow, that's actually really good. So. I'm sorry, I have my whole binder here, so I just didn't take, here, you know what? Let me, let me take one out. That's gonna be easier than just lifting up a binder. Okay, so the magic card that changed is this beautiful card right here. Wayfarer's Bobble. I'm gonna put up a picture and I'll read it to you guys. Wayfarer, Wayfarer's Bobble is a one drop artifact. Two colorless and tap it. Sacrifice Wayfarer, Wayfarer's Bobble Search your library for a basic land card and put it, that card onto the battlefield tapped. Then shuffle your library. Doesn't seem that good at first glance. I am with you on that one. But it is actually a lot better than it seems. So um, before we hop into why it's good, let's talk about how much I got it for. I bought this. About exactly, actually it probably was, it was exactly a week ago today. I bought it for 51 cents on the Modern Masters 2015 cent, uh, set. I bought it for 51 cents. 51, keep that number in mind. If we are, I'm gonna put up a picture of the price chart right here. I bought it for 51 cents, I bought five of them. I wanted eight, but I didn't quite get eight. So, but I wanted five, right? You know what I get? I got, or I wanted eight, but I got five. I bought them for 51 cents, like I said. They went up, and they are still going straight up. And I mean straight up. Like, if you look at the curve, it is straight up. Like, it's like straight up and down. You know what I mean? Like, straight up and down. Like, it's going to crash up. Boop, boop, boop. It's straight up and down. You know what I mean? Like, it's straight up and down. Yeah, okay, you get the point. Um, it went up to 215. And I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but it went up to 215 in a week. One singular week. Not two weeks, not three, one week, seven days. This card is becoming a commander staple. Um so I got, like I said, five of them. I made a total of what's five times? Five times one fifty. It's like seven dollars. Mental math, not my strong suit. It's I think it's seven fifty. But I made seven fifty on five common cards. You know how insane that is? It's a common card. 
So yeah, I picked them up while they were cheap. I would still recommend you to go pick one up, at least one. They're still gonna go up. They're continuously going up. They're, I'd say they'll hit, I don't think they're gonna go too much higher just because, you know, it's a common, it, how high can it really get? But I'd say it's gonna hit three, four dollars. It's gonna be like around Soul Ring's price, but a little bit cheaper. So yeah, that is my amazing story. Um, before we go open the War of the Spark booster, I wanna go talk about why it actually is good. Like, why is it actually shooting up in value? It's become a commander staple, like I said, but the difference between some stuff is interesting. So, a basic land isn't that great. You can't go find your dual land. You can't go find your shock land. You can't go find anything else. You have to find a basic land. But why is that good? Like, it doesn't seem that good. Now, at first glance, it doesn't seem good. But I can assure you, on turn one, when you're getting this out turn one, and you put it out, and then you put another basic land out on turn two, or whatever land you have, as long as it's untapped, turn two, you can get another basic land. Why is this helpful? It's just one basic mana ramp. It's helpful because in a five or four color deck, especially, I play as me being a person who plays the Air Dragon as a commander, I'll put up a picture. Um, this is why it's good. Because you're stuck. And even if you save it, like, until, like, you really, really need to use it. Like, you could use it turns five or six when you don't, when you're missing that one mana you need to cast something. Like, let's say I'm turn five on, uh, when I'm playing the Air Dragon deck. If I don't have one of the colors, I can't cast my commander in some of the cards in my deck. So, that's when you just use it, go search for a basic land, and put it right on the battlefield tapped. So it's just helping you fix your mana for a very cheap price. And although you do have to sacrifice it, it's a one-time use, like, that's still good. Like, if you're missing one color, and you need to find that color to cast, like, your commander or something else, that is the best way to do it. I mean, it's not the best way, but it's up there. Now, that being said, since it's not the best way to do it, it does seem like, why would you even play it? In Commander, if you don't already know, I'll explain this. You have a 100 card deck and you can only have one card, or one type of each card, um, not including basic lands. So you can have as many basic lands as you want, but you can only have one type of each card. Now, when you have one type of each card, obviously your chances are very slim of drawing the card you need. So if you put like, um, any other mana fixing card really in your deck, uh, let's say you just had one. If you put Wayfarer's Bobble in, that's automatically increasing your chances of getting that extra boost in the mana curving that you need to get, or uh, not mana curving, mana fixing that you need to get. Because if you need that mana, you need that mana. Like, I've been in multiple times when I'm playing the Earth Dragon deck, and I've been like turn six, seven, eight, and I could cast my commander, but I don't have all of the mana colors I need to get my commander on the board. But with this, I could just search for the color I need and then have it. Or even if you're missing two, or if it's a four color deck, you can still get one of them and then hopefully draw the next one or find something else to get the next land you need. So that's why I think this card is going up in value and that's why I suggest you getting at least one for yourself, whether or not it's you're gonna hold on to it and try and flip it later when it's going up in value. Um, or just use it yourself, but I definitely suggest going out and buying uh, one of these for yourself, if not more. So that being said, I think we had a good discussion here. I know this is a bit different than what I normally do. I normally do openings, which we are still opening a pack. Um, but yeah, so before we get into that, um, I just want to say thank you guys for watching, supporting the channel. Uh, you guys are awesome. You guys allow me to do things like this and sell these to you guys. Like I said, link in bio if you want to go check those out. Let's hop right into a wonderful booster pack opening. Let's do this, guys. Alright guys, I got the camera set up for a quick booster pack opening of War of the Spark. This just came out, so I'm excited to open this real quick as the end of the video. So hopefully you guys made it through that little ramble there. Go pick one of those Wayfarers bobble up for yourself. I highly recommend it. Sorry the audio is not 
formal. Uh, I would have plugged in my mic, but I have a busy week this week and I really just don't have time. So excuse me for that one there, but yeah, let's hop right into a quick War of the Spark booster pack opening. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the rest of the video so far. Um, yeah, I think, I do think it's crazy how a common actually has increased that much in value. But moving on from that, let's go ahead and open up this pack. So we start with Chain Whip, Cyclops, Teo's Light Shield, Spellkeeper, Weird. And don't worry, this is not going to be the last booster pack opening. In fact, I have a fat pack. Jeez, I can't talk. I have a fat pack of Or the Spark in the mail coming. Should come by the end of the week, so we should have that out for maybe even Sunday's or Saturday's video. This weekend's video. I don't know. We will have to see. Turret, Ogre. Sorry, I'm stalling here. Courage in Crisis, Shriek, Diver, Prismite. Spark Harvest, not a bad one. Thundering Ceratok, Nahiri's Stone Blades. Moving on to the uncommon section here. Augur of Bolas. I'm going to read these just because we don't have much pack to open here. Uh, one in the blue, one three. When it enters the battlefield, look at the top three cards of your library. You may reveal an instant or sorcery card from among them. Put it into your hand and put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. So not too terrible of a card. Nisa's Triumph. Nisa, Nisa's Triumph. I'm sorry. I can't pronounce things. Two green. Sorcery. Search your library for up to two basic forest cards. Hey, talking about basic lands. If you control a Nissa Planeswalker, instead search your library for up to three of those lands. Reveal those cards and put them into your hand. Then shuffle your library. Also, not a bad ramp card for yourself. And Jung Yanggu Wild Crafter. Two a green and three loyalty, legendary planeswalker Yanggu. Each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it has tapped to add one man of any color. Minus one, put a one, plus one plus one counter on target creature. Lots of ramp today in this video. I don't know what's happening. Okay, and a rare in the pack is going to be, oh my God, the biggest meme of the century, plain wide celebration. That's all right, we got many more of these packs to open. That's okay. I'm not going to get too mad. <laughs> Five, two, green. Choose four. You may choose two. Choose the same mode more than once. It's actually not too terrible in like Commander, but it's not great in anything else. Maybe sealed, but it's expensive still. Uh, so choose four. You may choose the same mode more than once. Create a 2 2 citizen creature token that's all colors. Return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. Proliferate, you gain four life. So you could gain 16 life. I guess it's not terrible, but it's just not to par with like modern standard if you were playing a ramp deck or anything. But yep. So we have a mountain and a spirit token. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel. Like I said, go check out some merch. Maybe buy some for yourself, buy some for your friends. It's cheap. Don't worry. I'm not overcharging you guys. So, like I said, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, Please drop a like, subscribe if you're new to the channel. If you want to help support the channel, check out the Patreon or the uh, merch link in bio. So yeah, I'll see you guys on the next one. Have a good one, guys. I'll see you on Saturday. Peace out.